Hello RV Daydream, how are you? And we're going to talk about water again. We've been dealing with water for some time. We have a pretty good handle on it, but we're always looking for something new. And that's what we're going to talk about today, something new, a little bit different. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. So as you guys know, we have a triple filter system that we carry around with us, and we have a couple of pre-filters, and then of course the RV has an onboard filter. A lot of times, a lot of these campgrounds we're going to, um, they are pretty brutal. Some of the water is pretty brutal. Um, Heidi brings up a point about uh, Okeechobee. Remember that? Yeah, we were using uh, just a regular, well, two filters, one on the rig and one on the hose. And then we started to use the zero pitcher filter and it th th their water there destroyed our filter in two weeks <laughs> yeah this was supposed to be that pitcher f that has a filter built into it you just pour the water in the top and it filters it and two weeks is all it went and it was supposed to go a lot longer than that about three months yeah yeah it was bad so we've been messing around and changing our filter system now the thing is with any of these systems you're not going to get rid or change the taste of the water. That's not what these systems are made to do, to change the taste. What they're meant to do is make the water safe. So once you get below a certain micron, um, you should be okay as far as solids. However, you need to make sure that you're protecting yourself against bacteria and heavy metals. So what we've done in the past is address it with filters. We're still kind of addressing it with filters. But the system itself, the main part of the system, not so much. So what are we talking about? Okay, so you can see what's sent to us here. Um, Acuva is the name of the company. They have a few different offices. Um, this one shipped to us from British Columbia. Now, full disclosure, obviously, they shipped us the product. Um, we're not getting paid. Uh, they didn't tell us that we had to get a good review or anything like that. They said try it out and do a review if everything worked out. Obviously, if you're watching this, it must have worked out. Um, if not, um, I will be seeing this footage. Just me and nobody else. But we're going to open this up and take a look at it because this is a small enough form function that you can get it in your RV. Um, you might have some challenges, which we have some definite challenges uh, underneath our sink that I'm going to have to deal with because we do not have a large cabinet door that opens up underneath our sink. So you can imagine how hard it is to work underneath uh, around plumbing, working through regular sliding drawer openings. So we'll have to see if we're even able to do that. We might have to mount it somewhere else. But inside here is a little unit that can run off of 12 volt or AC power. And what it does is through concentrated small UV light that's concentrated, um, it addresses the water supply and kills all of those heavy contaminants to make it safe, safe to drink. That's the main thing you want. Now, of course, taste uh, is something that everybody wants to address, but this is to address the safety of the water so you're not getting sick. They are approaching it a different way. They do have a pre-filter, but they have a device that does all of the work uh, whenever the faucet is energized to kill the bacteria as the water is passing through it. So this was shipped to us DHL. I don't know how they, they'll ship to you necessarily. And uh, two things. Um, the company is very responsive. They're quick to uh, respond to anything that we have as far as inquiries. And secondly, they're going to give us a discount code for you guys. So if you want to purchase one of these for your RV system, you can do that. So this is the first time we got a chance to look at this. So traditional retail packaging here. Uh, some thank yous. And of course, now you're looking at the type of system it is, Aeromax 2.0. And if you look at this diagram or this picture, this is really the system in, in just short. You're going to have a T-fitting that you're going to cut into your pecs, your half-inch pecs. That's going to allow then for this T to feed a pre-filter. The pre-filter goes into the system. It comes out of the system, goes through a flow restrictor. The reason is, is because the flow can only be so fast. 
so the UV light has plenty of time to burn whatever bacteria and metals are in there contaminating the water you just can't have a fire hose and put a little light in it and expect it to get, do the job so that's why there's a flow restrictor and then you get this brushed smart faucet and this faucet's energized uh, when you turn it on uh, at the handle it does it automatically when it's turned off this goes in standby mode so it's not using that much power so how much power does it use well with a 12 volt system you're only talking about 9 watts which is less than 1 amp whenever it's active and it's actually working in standby mode so little it's not even worth even mentioning could it run your battery down eventually but it's less than a dome light I mean it, it would take a long time for it to run down uh, as far as the mounting of the system there's brackets and all that included and of course for the pre-filter too now the pre-filter is specific it's from them and there's a couple of different ones they have a standard one and then they have a uh, advanced one now the advanced one you can get 4,000 gallons that it will handle 4,000 is a lot uh, the standard one, you're only talking a thousand gallons, still a thousand gallons. You know, we have a 60 gallon onboard tank. You know, we could go through quite a few of those full onboard tanks before we'd have to worry about replacing the pre filter. And the pre filter is a quick release, shark bite type thing. It doesn't use any fittings. So you just kind of push in the lines, it holds steady. And then when it's time to replace, you just release the lines and put the new filter in. The, the unit itself, uh, not very heavy got kind of a unique bracket in the back a um, couple of ports on here this one says in this one says out just like you'd expect and then uh, the uh, power itself that's, that's kind of cool wonder if this gets set flat I'll have to take a look at that and the fitting that we're looking at this is uh, the push part the push fitting for the line to go in like I said it doesn't require any tools you just push it in and it locks it in place we'll set this off to the side after I take the bag off and we'll see what else is in here so now you have this large filter now you you've seen these type of filters um, pretty much anywhere and it does feel like it's a solid uh, this is kind of nice you got a rubber grommet you got a mount that's to mount the uh, filter wherever it may end up the reason is is because you got a lot of hard lines that you'll be using so you want to make sure the bends are nice and gradual no kinks so they give you a bracket to make sure it holds in place um, yet another bracket for the same reason uh, this is the uh, flow restrictor here's that t-fitting when I talked about it's got the uh, what they refer to in the industry even though it's a brand um, still people call these shark bites and basically you take your pecs if it's cut flush the pecs goes in there and locks itself in automatically um, you don't have to do anything else and then this gives you the T that's necessary to run the supply line into the uh, Acuva box they give you some uh, quarter inch tubing yeah uh, I'll have to see how much that is that looks like that should be enough and then the bracket again to mount the the unit itself you've got a, the, the wire the power wire looks like it's got a, a locking collar on it that's kind of nice that once it's in there you can make sure it stays on there and in this case it's 12 volt you see that these wires aren't very big so that gives you an idea how much power is demanded off the system not very much positive and negative pretty simple there and since this is in a bag and its own special box of course this is the appliance side and this is the uh, plug that goes into the unit uh, it, it turns it on whenever the faucet is on turns it off whenever it is up um, you can see it's a swivel this is where your water is going to dispense obviously and uh, of course the uh, supply hose from the device is going to go into this however as far as attaching it to the countertop um, it gives you these components now the o-ring goes up to seal up against the counter so you don't have any kind of water spill that might come down and then there's an opening for this to go through yeah it looks pretty straightforward as far as the components what I'm concerned about with me is just the space for it now again this is just the standard filter now the standard filter is good for a thousand gallons this just does chlorine sediments and taste um, that's what the filter does now if you have 
a definite problem with heavy metal. Um, what I'm meaning is lead, mercury, anything that is known in your area, then you need to go to the advanced filter. Again, that does 4,000 gallons, and it, and it addresses those other things, those heavy metals. You know, the U, UV rays from the sun in particular, that kills a lot of bacteria. So that's basically what this does. It's basically giving you the power of the sun and just a little tiny stream, a little tiny section to spray uh, or should shine through the water flow and uh, take care of these bacteria. They, that's the most harmful thing. Of course, the heavy metals over a period of time also are. So let's go ahead and get this thing positioned. I'll find a place for it and uh, we'll see what it looks like uh, whenever it's being used. So you're going to have to find a place to mount your system. Now, as I said in our case, uh, I'm not going to be able to do a step-by-step -step because this is going to be complicated and there's no way we can get camera angles on something that we can barely get our hands on. So if you look here, you're going to have to drill a hole in your counter. So if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then you're not going to be able to do the installation. <laughs> so this is where we chose to mount it. Uh, I had to get underneath and make sure the electrical wasn't in the way. Um, we're going to be reaching through the electrical to hold the bottom of the faucet and tighten it. Uh, but this will allow us to access the water lines that are running to the faucet relatively easy. And I do have 12 volt that's available also that we're going to tie into for the system, you know, to make it a little easy. Now you can see we do have a plug here and I could have made it to where we plugged it in, stuff like that, but I don't think we really need to do that. I, I'd rather it run on 12 volt. Again, it's not energized unless you have it turned on um, to, you know, to where it would draw any amount of power that you'd have to be concerned about. Again, it's still under an amp, really. It, it's not very much at all. So we'll go ahead and go a little bit further here. Um, basically, I'm in the process now of cutting the lines, installing it, and um, installing the unit. I got to find a place for the unit also. But I wanted to show this part of the installation, probably one of the only parts of the installation I'll show because it's going to vary from whoever's you know doing it, your unit, how you're mounting it, where you're wanting to mount it. I think that we've seen some RVers that have mounted it in their bathroom even uh, because it's and we could have done that. It was been relatively easy, but uh, we wanted to make sure that if we're using it for drinking water, um, that it's in the place that it should be. And I can explain to a new RV buyer if we ever sell our RV. The reason there's an extra faucet out here versus an extra faucet in the bathroom. So uh, let me go ahead and get a little bit further along and we'll show you what it looks we went like. went ahead and finished out the installation. And again, I didn't show you the installation because, well, I'll tell you quite frankly, your installation is not going to be more difficult than mine. Mine was a very difficult installation because of being able to get over to this area. I just don't have any access to get to it. So I had to work through uh, that cabinet and reach, you know, through this hole. And I mean, it's just a pain in the butt. So what is this going to do for our drinking water? Well, you could go to their website and you can see, um, or they'll talk about, you know, how good, how good the quality of the water is going to be. We're not going to bottle up our water and test it and, and, do you know send off a, a, a sample to show you before or after because people have already done that before and that's not what this is about this is our thoughts on it which i'm going to tell you here and these aren't all positive thoughts but you you maybe some improvements they might be able to work into as far as installation so acuvastore.com is the website i'll put it down in the link below and again there will also be a code in the description for 10% off and it's going to be RV daydream uh, that's something they arranged for us whenever they delivered this and again they're not paying us for this they did give us the uh, the device for free for a review and we're going to review it how we see fit so the whole thing that I think is they're real close they're very close on the installation drilling the hole in the countertop that has to be done I mean, there's just no other way around that if you want to have the spigot, you know, like this. So, again, if you have a problem with that, then you're, you're going to have, you know, an issue installing any kind of a drinking system, really. 
I know a lot of you are saying, well, I've got the Berkey filter. Listen, I don't want the Berkey filter. We have a coffee maker on here. We have the, the coffee, the sugar. We have an ice maker up here. I don't want something. And you know what? Some of the Berkey filters won't even fit underneath the counter. It, they won't even fit on here physically. So that's why we don't do the Berkey filter. So that's why we have these other systems that we've been trying out. Now with that pre-filter that's on this system, that'll help quite a bit with maybe some chlorine taste and, and possibly some taste in general. But for the most part, it's all about making the water safe to drink. So how does the system work? Well, I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like up here. It's off, obviously, and when you turn it on, see that light? As soon as that light comes on, that means the system is energizing and it is sanitizing basically uh, the water with ultraviolet rays and again as soon as it comes on that's whenever it's going on down below too how do we know that because when you're down below which you can see it installed back here what a what a lovely working area I had huh and you can't really see hardly any of it let me see if I can stretch you out this way uh, that's maybe a little better and we'll turn this off you're in the dark now but you'll see it light up that tells you that the LED or I'm sorry the ultraviolet is doing the job and it is illuminating <laughs> the water it's basically um, killing all that bacteria with UV rays again very little I'm going to turn this on so you can see it again very little on the effort part of uh, actually connecting it up other than the fact that we had to drill the hole in the countertop that that takes a little bit you know you need a three-quarter inch drill bit or hole saw and then as far as um, you know getting to everything it, it for us it's it was very difficult but that's not their fault now I'm going to tell you what they could have done to make it a little bit easier now this is where they they could have just stepped up a little bit I think a couple of things they have this connection system which I refer to as shark bite and what that is is a it's a push-in style positive connection that once there's pressure on the line or once you try to pull the line back out it locks itself in place it has teeth that only allow to go it's, it's just a Chinese finger trap for basically plumbing um, copper all kinds of stuff PEX um, rubber uh, PVC and they make it for everything so what I have a problem with is that they have a T fitting that has two shark bites on either side which is great that's no tools you cut the PEX with a tool but once you cut that PEX to put it in the T-fitting, you just push it in on either side and that's it. It's locked in, it's sealed. So why would they actually put a ferrule in a plastic quarter inch line that those things have a tendency to leak um, on the other part of the T? That should have been a shark bite also. The other thing is, is that the base of the drinking system the the actual faucet is yet another ferrule and nut setup um, it should just be a push-in it, it shouldn't require uh, any kind of tools I mean especially with that you know your drinking faucet 90% of the time you're not going to be able to get a wrench in there or if the countertop is really thick like in our case we had the countertop and then supportive boards that are built in from the factory the nut which requires no tools to keep this tight against the countertop um, even though I could turn that by hand the big wing nut the thumb nuts or the thumb braces that you use to tighten the thumb nut kinda get in the way of the wrench so I was fighting with that again trying to get into an area that is really tough and if they just had a push you know shark bite style fitting like they do and, and kudos to them for that on the unit themselves on the unit itself it has where you just stick the quarter inch line in push and it locks in place for the inlet and the outlet and on the the uh, flow 
control, you know, the, uh, uh, the device that keeps the uh, flow under a certain amount so that the light can do its work and kill the bacteria. That has push in. So again, that same quarter inch hose pushes into the top, locks in place, pushes in the bottom, locks in place. No tools required for that. And also the pre-filter, same thing. It just has push in on both sides. You just push them in and they lock in place. I think that all the fittings should have been like that. Um, I'm sure they have their reasons why, but I'm sure they could have also done it that way. Other than that, the system is very easy to install. Um, it's just difficult whenever you have a tight confined area like we do. However, it's done. So what we're going to do is we're going to try out this water for maybe a couple of weeks. And when I come back, we'll tell you what we think about the water quality and how much it might have saved us traveling back and forth to wherever we would normally go to get water or like in our case with the filters. All, you know, we have all those filters out there. Uh, not having to run those filters necessarily. So we're back and it's after a limited time usage of the system. It's ex exactly what we expected. Every water system that we've had does exactly what it's supposed to and that is filter the water to a safe level for us to drink. Every one of them. So not only is this Acuva, which is the best and I'll tell you why here in a second um, for doing that but uh, some of the other systems we've had in the past too that we've done reviews on why is this one the best well it's the same reason that we haven't gone to a five stage reverse osmosis system and that is we don't have a place to mount filters and we don't want to be changing filters we, we just don't want to do it this system allows no filter change except for the filter that comes with it. You know, that's a thousand gallons. Now, here's the best part. All of our other filter systems that we have, they treat all the water that comes into this place. So in the sink, in the bathroom, in the shower, in the toilet, even the flush the black tank if we didn't have a T-fitting, which we do. All that is treated water that makes it to where our water softener we have to cycle it you know a little bit sooner than we probably would have if we just focused on clean kitchen water and then of course the triple filter system that we have out there that needs to be changed more often because we're using it for everything which we kind of want to take our showers and in, in softened and in, in decent water you know good filtered water however this system, that one little pre-filter that they have, is going to last, you know, we're talking a couple years at a thousand gallons. If you count out how much water, which we drink a lot of water, um, it, it lasts a long time it, because that's the only thing running through it. Maybe some cooking water too, but that, that's the best part about it. Now, Heidi will tell you why we aren't going to use the system for necessarily drinking water except when it's in a pinch. Because I'm a water snob. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm right there with her. Now, we lived um, at the house for 20-some years, and probably the last 15 years that we lived there, um, I had a five-stage reverse osmosis system on the well water that we had there. Our well water came up, went through a softener, which a lot of people say you're not supposed to drink softened water, but you know once it goes through a five-stage system, it, it cuts yeah. that back, that salt back quite a bit. And uh, we also had a whole house filter, and our water was pretty good right out of the hole. I mean, what I'm saying is directly out of the well, you could drink the water, and it was pretty good. We had a huge aquifer. So for at least 15 years, we've been drinking good filtered well water through a reverse osmosis system and we haven't broke our habits of that so we have a tendency still to get drinking water elsewhere now we have been in plenty of parks uh, well except for and and you guys have been watching us we've been traveling quite a bit we've been on the road now for uh going on a year this october and we have hit a lot of parks, a lot of different states, and I think 
with the exception of maybe four that I know for sure. Two, definitely, but four. I think there was another two. We could have drank the water safely at all those other parks. And this system would allow that. It would allow us to drink the water safely. Um, it's just the taste. We, we have a certain criteria when it comes to the taste of the water. So it's nice to know that we can go to that. And, of course, cooking water and stuff like that, we could do that because most of the time you're boil, coming to boil anyways. Um, but, yeah, uh, Heidi said it kind of stops on water. So the five-state system, the reason we've never installed one is you've seen the installation of this thing. I just don't have the room. And can you imagine putting the filters in there and having to change the filters, you know, every year? Even if it's a year, just to get in there to do that, it's just a major handful. So let me show you what this system looks like one more time as we give our closing thoughts on it here. Faucet is flawless. If you want, I'm sure you could slightly bend this in or out as needed uh, to make it to where whenever it does come on, it either hits the hole <laughs> or you got to kind of put it to the side because this will splatter the way it hits here. Now, uh, one of our really good subscribers, he has this system. He's had it for a while now, and he has he didn't like the flow. Um, the flow is reduced. This is just a, a, a drinking glass, you know, a, a liquor glass, tell you the truth, which holds about a double, and you can see how fast it fills. I mean, that's relatively slow. It's not fast. So, but honestly, I think it is the same as ours at home. Yeah, I believe so too, because we had on our reverse osmosis system, we had a, a, a spigot that came out. And again, the way the system works is they have that flow restrictor so that light has a tint, you know, even though it's an intense LED UV light that is hitting the water as it passes through, it's got to go slow. It's got to it's got to spend a certain amount of time crossing the water or going through the water to kill it. Um, but you can see no air bubbles, no inclusions, nothing like that. Um, and as far as the taste of the water, it tastes like normal well water to me. Um, fit, finish, tight, swivel, all this works real well. Everything underneath works real well. Other than those couple installation notes that I talked about, uh, as far as the shark bite fittings needed to be on the bottom of this and on the T fitting. Um, it's a, a good, nice, easy installation as long as you have access to where you want to mount it. Would we recommend it? Yeah. It's a very nice system. I, I, I like it a lot. I bet this would work real well for city water. 90% of you won't, wouldn't have a problem with that water that I just drank. Matter of fact, I don't really have a problem with that water I drank. It's not bad. Um, we tested as far as the hardness and of course that's not really what it's made for the filter does a little bit of a job on that but still um, we have other filters that are outside that are helping this out and we'll continue to do that I will use this for cooking yeah for sure yeah there's no reason not to yeah. the link is going to be down in the description for their store which is acuvastore.com or acuvastore.com however you want to say it and um, use the code RV daydream you're going to get a discount it's 10% off if you don't want to put filters in, except for the pre-filter, and you just need something for drinking water, that's it. So yeah, they have a home system if you want to try this in your home. I mean, it's an, it's an option. It's an alternative. Uh, uh, you just want safe water, and a lot of people don't care how the water tastes. Some people like that variety. So, links in the description. We hope this helped you out, and... As always, we hope to see you out here. Bye! Bye.